Hey guys, today we are going to review equations and inequalities. We're going to start with solving equations. I have the Desmos graphing calculator pulled up to the right over here because this is one of the calculators that you will be able to use on your star test. You'll also be able to use a virtual TI-84, but for most things I like this Desmos calculator better, which is why I have it pulled up. Okay, so let's talk about solving equations and inequalities. So remember on either side of your equal or inequality sign, you have two expressions. And the first step is to simplify both of those expressions, both sides of the equation separately by distributing and combining like terms. Then if we have variables on each side, you will move the variables to the same side and the constants to the other side with inverse operations. So the first step when we're simplifying, you don't do inverse operations, but once you start moving things to the other side of the equation or inequality, that's when you use inverse operations. And then just remember for inequalities, you have to flip the inequality sign when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So let's look at this first one. It is an equation. I need to simplify this side of the equation and this side of the equation first. So obviously on this side, I'm going to distribute first. Four times three X is 12 X. And then four times negative 52.3. I'm gonna use the calculator for that. And we get negative 209.2. equals on the right side of the equation, I can combine 3.5x and 4.5x to make 8x and then plus 2.8. All right, now we need to collect the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move the variables to the same side by subtracting 8x from both sides. And I get 4x minus 2 9.2 equals 2.8. And now I'm going to add the 209.2 to both sides. And I get 4x equals, I'm just going to double check here, 2.8 plus 209.2 is 212. And then my last step is to divide by 4. And I get x equals 212 divided by 4 is 53. Okay, one thing we're going to be talking about throughout your review is how you can check most of your answers. So it's very important to double check your answers all the time in math, but especially on standardized tests, because it's really easy to just make one mistake and you could do all of this wonderful work and then get the answer wrong simply because you chose the wrong answer. All right, so to double check my answer on this equation, I'm going to replace X with 53 and make sure that it makes the equation too true. So I'm going to do four parentheses three times 53 minus 52.3 and that is 426.8. So I should get that on the other side too. 3.5 times 53 plus 2.8 plus 4.5 times 53 is also 426.8, so we did that correctly. So that is how you can double check your equations on your test. Okay, let's look at this one. I have an inequality, so same thing. I need to simplify this side of the equation first. So I'm gonna distribute the negative six and I get negative three X minus 30 minus 12 X is greater than negative 10 X plus 15. And now I'm gonna combine like terms on the left side of the equation and I get negative 15 X minus 30 is greater than negative 10 X plus 15. Okay, now I'm going to add 10 X to move my variables to the same side and I get negative five X minus 30 is greater than 15 and then I'm going to add 30 and I get negative 5x is greater than 45 and then I'm dividing by a negative 5 and since I'm dividing by a negative I have to make sure I flip the inequality sign. 
So my final solution here is x is less than negative 9. Okay, we also have special cases with equations. So this example that we did right here was a one solution. There's one solution that would make that equation true. Let's take a look at that with this equation here. If you notice, my variables are different. 3x and negative 3x are different. As long as your variables are different, it does not matter what your constants are. They can be the same or different. The most important thing is whenever you have different variables, you are going to get a one solution equation. Let's look at why. The variables are not going to zero out. I get 6x plus 3 equals 3. And then my constants are the same here, so I end up getting 6x equals 0 or x equals 0, which is one solution. So as long as your variables are different, you are going to end up with a one solution equation. Let's look at no solution, our first special case. This time, my variables are the same. I have positive 3x and positive 3x on both sides. And then my constants are different. I have negative three and positive three. So when you have the same variables but different constants, you end up with no solution. Let's look at why. When we have the same variables, our variables zero out. So that's why it's a special case. And then I'm left with negative three equals three, which is not true. So that's why this one is no solution. And then our last special case is infinite solutions. Again, we have those same variables, negative 3x and negative 3x. And this time, our constants are the same, positive 3 and positive 3. So when the variables and the constants are the same, that's when you end up with infinite solutions. Let's look at why. When you add 3x to both sides, the variables zero out and you're left with three equals three, which is true. So that's why this one is infinite solutions. Okay, then remember inequalities, you can also graph the solution set. So we're gonna look at the four different scenarios and how you could graph those inequalities. So the first one is X is greater than three. With our symbols, it would look like this. That's the greater than sign. That would be an open circle on three, and then it is to the right. That is bigger than three. Four is bigger than three. So that's what that inequality would look like. Okay, X is less than three symbolically looks like this. You would have an open circle on three, and that would be shaded to the left since it's less than three. X is greater than or equal to three. This time it's going to be a solid circle on three since it's greater than or equal to, and then it's shaded towards the right for greater than. And then last one, X is less than or equal to symbolically looks like this. Again, a solid circle on three since we have that equal sign and less than three is two. So we shade towards the left. Okay, the last type of equations that we have are literal equations, which is when we have more than one variable. So remember to solve these equations, you need to identify the variable that you're trying to isolate. They'll either tell you what variable you are trying to get by itself. It'll say like solve for Y or solve for A, or on your multiple choice test, it would just have the variable that you're trying to solve for isolated like that. So identify the variable you're trying to isolate and determine what operations are happening to that variable. And then you're gonna solve for the variable you are trying to isolate by using inverse operations. We are gonna undo the operations that are happening to the variable in reverse order. So let's follow those steps for this first one. We are trying to isolate Y. So let's list out what's happening to y. The first thing that I see happening to y is it's being multiplied by this negative seven. And then the second thing is it has that positive for x attached to it. 
So now I'm going to undo this in reverse order. That will be the steps to isolate y. So we will subtract 4x since that's the opposite of adding 4x. And then we will divide by negative 7 since that's the opposite of multiplying by negative 7. So let's do that to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 4x first. And we get negative 7. y equals negative 4x plus 14. And then my last step is to divide by negative 7. And we get y equals 4 sevenths x minus 2. Okay, then on this one, I am solving for A. So let's list what's happening to A. The first and closest thing I see happening to A is it's being multiplied by 13. The second thing, the second closest thing is we are subtracting 5B from it. And then the last thing that I see happening is it's being divided by 2. So to get a by itself, I'm going to undo these things in reverse order. So the opposite of dividing by two is multiplying by two. The opposite of subtracting five B is adding five B. And the opposite of multiplying by 13 is dividing by 13. So let's do those things to get a by itself. So first step is to undo that dividing by two by multiplying by two. And I get 13 a minus five B equals c times 2 is 2c. And then I'm still trying to get a by itself, so I'm going to undo that minus 5b by adding 5b to both sides. And I get 13a equals, I'm going to rearrange this to 5b plus 2c. And then the last step to get a by itself is undo the multiplication by 13 by dividing by 13. So a is 5b plus 2c all divided by 13. 